Hello everyone, my name's Tim, I'm the tax partner at Howard Worth and thank you for joining me on this presentation following the budget. Now the Chancellor mentioned to get things done and a budget for change. What I will be focused on is several announcements that were made and what planning can be done around them. But let's firstly look at entrepreneurs relief. Lots of rumours that this was going to get abolished but all he did was reduce the lifetime gains to one million. This was the original limit back in 2008 until it was later increased. This means that any lifetime gains above one million are taxed at 20%. This is still one of the lowest rates in the EU with Germany at 28% and Ireland at 30%. Now the lifetime limit applies to each person so what can be done? What planning can be done? Well, the answer is simple having multiple stakeholders and multiple shareholders in a business. Now these are the Radfords, a family of 22. There's been three since that last picture and it was taken a few years ago. Now once these guys reach the age of 18, they can each have shares in the business and when they sell them, 22 million, the first 22 million of gains is taxed at 10%. Giving shares to spouses and civil partners or giving shares to trusted friends can be done tax-free and make use of everyone's one million personal allowance. There is also an increase in the capital gains tax annual exemption from 12,000 to 12,300 where the first 12,300 of gains are absolutely tax-free. But is there anything else that can be done? The answer is yes because tax is not logical. If you have signed contracts before sale on the 11th of March but the deal isn't yet completed, all is not lost. Please go back and check the small print as if the only reason that you signed was to get it done early or to secure a deposit, you can still qualify for the 10% tax rate on gains above 1 million. Moving on to the R&D tax relief regime. This new rate of 13% refers to research and development expenditure credits. That's a bit of a mouthful, so we call it RDEC. This has increased over the years, but how does it work? Well, it actually is a tax relief for large companies, but it can also be used by smaller companies. Let's see how this works. We had a small company that was commissioned by Heinz to develop a faster and more cost-effective labelling and stock processing machine. It spent around 100,000 of, of time, of staff time and materials used in coming up with a new machine that was better and faster than the previous one. So once the product was tested and completed, not only did they receive income from Heinz of 150,000, but the government gave them 13,000, 13% 13 of 100K. So a total of 163,000 for their work. But RDEC also applies to small companies that get a grant to develop a new product. We have a client working on producing protein supplements for vegans. He gets a £100,000 grant and spends it on paying his staff, using chemicals and paying health and safety inspectors to make sure it's compliant. He will get his grant of 100000 and also another 13000 from the government. So in total he's received 113000 in funding. RDEC is often missed as it can be used by small companies who are commissioned by large companies to do their R&D and also by companies who apply and obtain a grant to develop a new product. But overall, R&D tax relief in general is missed because under this regime, £1.30 of every £1 spent on qualifying R&D qualifies for tax relief. And it's not too late to claim, as I'll show you next. So let's take the year ending 30th April 2018. We have a profit before the R&D cost of 100000 we take away the cost of labour and materials of 100,000, but then the government gives you another £1.30 for every pound spent, so another 130,000 comes off your taxable profit. This leaves you with a tax loss of 130,000. What can you do with it? Well, you go back to April 17 and claim a refund. And the refund could be as much as 26,000, being 20% of the 130k. Under normal circumstances, HMRC will pay this within four weeks back to your uh, bank account. But given the current circumstances, this is likely going to be a bit longer. 
Now, we've done claims for lots of companies, including a company that makes pies with new ingredients, law companies improving their CRM system, and retailers speeding up their ordering and delivery process. Further information is available on our websites, the rndco.co.uk, and there you'll find out what qualifies and how you can claim. R35, what's changed? Well, I was going to talk to you about this, but only last week the government decided to delay it until April 21. This was trying to impose a higher rate of tax on companies who provide their services through limited companies. What could still be delayed, but nothing in the news as yet, is a change to collect tax more quickly. It applies to capital gains tax on the sales of residential property. This affects landlords, accidental landlords, those who live to their properties and now rent it, or houses which are slow moving, been empty for more than nine months since you've moved out. What is the change? Well, if you sold your property before 6th of April, you had until 31st of January 21 to make the payment. If you now sell after 6th of April 2020, you've only got 30 days to calculate the gain, report it online and pay the tax over. It's not an additional tax rate, it's just a way of paying the revenue quicker and for the revenue to collect quicker. Now, if you fail to do this, penalties and interest will apply. The question is, who's responsible for telling the client or the seller? Is it the solicitor? Is it the estate agent? Is it the letting agent? Is it us? Is it the mortgage broker? Who knows? But from a client care point of view, you need to tell us as soon as you know a client is selling or has sold their property so we can work out the tax, we can reduce the tax, and then tell them to pay online. Now some good news. Changes to electric cars. There should be a push on companies and individuals buying electric cars. Due to the massive drop in benefit and kind rates from 16% to zero, the private cost of driving an all electric car would fall dramatically. Drivers could save around two and a half thousand pounds in tax and also the company is going to get full tax relief for the purchase of that car. A £40,000 Tesla Model S will cost the company 32000 going forward. Now this was the first budget for over 12 months and made in unprecedented times. Some changes but nothing dramatic compared to what we knew already. Announcements still and continue to be made and we will keep you informed of what's happening and how it impacts you. But in the meantime, if you've got any queries, don't hesitate to call me or my colleagues. Thank you very much.